let those of you who may be joining in for the first time to Health Essentials to know that we have been going full force since January of this year. And um, we've covered many, many topics. And for the month of December, we are basically doing a um, review of what we've covered um, in some areas, and then I'm presenting some new as well. Um, so today we will continue on where we left off from last session, and we were talking about whole body eating. And then if we get through that, um, actually I wanna discuss the um, reflections and key les lessons learned from whole body eating. And then also we will move on, if time permits, to natural alignment of eating. So before we go further, let's go to the throne in prayer. All right. <laughs> Father God, we just thank you for another opportunity, Lord God, to see the day of light. Hallelujah. With um your name in our mouth, Lord God. We just thank you and let's have another opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Clothed in our right mind with use of our limbs and breath in our lungs, Lord God. I thank you for the information that you've given me to continually share with your people according to biblical and spiritual principles where our health and wellness is concerned. I thank you for each and every one that's joining in on YouTube and on Facebook and via Zoom, Lord God. Open their ears to hear what thus saith the Lord concerning our health and our well-being. And as you know, we ask you to forgive us, Lord God, for sins of omission and sins of commission, things we may have said, done, thought that are not like you. Let the words of our mouth and meditation of our heart always, always be acceptable in thy sight. Lord God, our strength and our redeemer. And we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. This, for the month of um, December, we're giving all glory back to God, returning glory back to him. Amen. And we know that there's so many ways we can do that. And that is by walking by faith, number one, is returning glory back to God. So let's move forth in... Um, what we're going to discuss today. And before we do that, I do want to back up to an area we discussed in our vitamin session. So consuming vitamins, before you decide to do so, it's important to make a well-informed decision because the optimal idea is to get the nutrition that you need from the foods that you consume. All right. And um, before consult with your doctor to get your vital to statistics, like your cholesterol levels, your blood pressure, your blood sugar levels, all of those vital statistics, your magnesium, your calcium, your vitamin levels, minerals, um, your um, water soluble and fat soluble vitamins. And those levels can be determined through your blood and you can get that from your doctor. And once you look on that list and you see the ranges of where um, we should be the numbers, right? and then where you are. And then you can make a well-informed decision if you even need to take um, vitamin supplementation. And remember, you know, our bodies, we are so wonderfully and marvelously made that, you know, the body, when we take vitamins, and it's important for them to be plant-based and not man-made. So when we take vitamins, if our body does not need, it will only use what it needs and it will eliminate the rest. Isn't that, Amazing. So like, you, have you noticed when you take, um, I'm going to say like water soluble vitamins, like vitamin B or C, your, um, when you micturate, micturate is past urine. When you pass urine, you notice that it's a neon color and you're like, oh, <laughs> when you take a look back, what is that? So, you know, you're basically, your body's eliminated. It used what it needed and then it's going to eliminate what it doesn't need. So that's pretty unique right there. So it's important to, um, I had mentioned before, to attend these health um, essential sessions consistently because each session does build upon the next, all right? So just know that this information that I'm presenting to you is for um, health purposes only, it's not to, it's not to um, diagnose or treat a disease, a dis-ease, all right? So just know it's for you, it's a information for you to take 
And then you can make a well-informed decision on which way you should go where your health and wellness is concerned. All right? Okay. So let's move forth in um, ending our whole body eating. Now, whole body eating, as we talked about, and this we're just gonna cover this briefly because I want to do some reflections. It's a simple practice of eating with awareness that can be done each day with minimal effort and maximal results. So, you know, being aware of how we eat and we've covered the five steps and that is making a conscious choice to eat, um, asking your body what it wants, number two, eating with awareness and then listening for feedback and then releasing the meal. So let me go to my questions I have here in my reflections. So I want you to consider reflecting on how much of your eating is automatic and without thought as to whether or not you are truly hungry. Something to consider. Can you recall any instances when you felt particularly attuned, you know, to your body's need? You know, what were the sensations that help you understand what your body wanted? What would help you remain in tune with your body, listening to the language of your body, not just eating as we talked about, just because the world says it's breakfast, it's morning, it's breakfast, it's noon, it's lunch, it's six, it's a dinner. Did your body say it needs to eat? You know, maybe it doesn't. You know, we have to really pay attention to that. So that's something to reflect on. And then how often do you eat with awareness of your meal? Are you in a hurry? Um, what would help you be more focused, you know, to, in eating? So it's something just to think about and be aware of. And do you ever observe the effects of a meal you have eating, you have eaten rather? Um, do you consistently have certain physical reactions or symptoms when you eat? And we're gonna cover more on that a little bit later down the road um, when it comes to uh, natural alignment and when it comes to chewing. So uh, remember, we're at the end of our sessions here for the month or for the year of 2021. And I did want to mention that um, starting in 2022, we will begin from the very beginning. So I'm gonna review, go over everything that we discussed in uh, 2021, all of those sessions with a new approach. So um, what did God say in his word? He said that, well, he said that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if you continue to hear and hear the do's of maintaining optimal health, then you won't do the don'ts. So when you constantly have that in your ear, you know, the do's, which is not a one size fit all, remember that, you know, it's, it's a curtail to you, you as an individual because you are wonderfully and marvelously made, amen? So when you focus on doing the do's and constantly hearing that, then you won't do the don'ts, all right? It'll just become natural to do the do's, you know, eat a salad every day. Um, take a walk every day. You know, that's what I do. I do what I do. <laughs> Amen. So uh, another reflection on whole body eating is how often do you think or fantasize about food? Do you? <laughs> and why do you think so many people are preoccupied, preoccupied with food? Right? Something to think about. Yeah, so, and as an experiment, um, I think I may have mentioned this last time. And if not, I'm going to suggest fasting one day a week in the month of December going forward. Fasting one day a week, this is just a recommendation. Drink lots of water, but try not to eat any food and observe your physical state and note the thoughts about eating that come up throughout the day. As you know, we're in the holiday season and there's gonna be all types of food abound. You know, the foods that we don't normally, what about all those baked goods? What about all those um, fresh, um, um, what would be candies made sweets. I, I actually tend to go to sweets, but anyway, the dishes too, with the sauces and the creams and the spices that you don't normally eat, but we are going to consume those because, you know, it's the holiday season. So it's something to be aware of all of these reflections, how much you're eating. Are you in tune with your body? Um, are you eating with awareness? Are you observing the effects of your meal? Are you going to continue fantasizing about that meal or are you going to release it and let it go and go on with your business for the day, right? Will you make an effort to fast one day a week for the month of December? Because as you know, at the House of Joy, we will be, we will be going into a fasting um, season 
with the new year. So, and then um, also I would encourage you one last thing, find a special eating bowl or plate just for you. And one that really catches your eye and inspires you to eat from it. So use that to eat out of all of your meals out of and see if there's any changes in your experience of eating, just thought. So think of, um, lastly, think of an item in which you demand quality and integrity. Like for instance, okay, you purchase a home, you purchase a car, your stereo system, your furniture, your clothing, where you worship, all right? Then imagine what would happen if you translated that same demand for quality to the food you eat and not just putting trash in your body, putting quality food in your body. As we know, it's perfectly clear. God made it perfectly clear in Leviticus and Deuteronomy what we are to eat and what we are not to eat. And it's not a commandment, but you know, we want good health. We want uh, optimal health. We want our body to be in a state of homeostasis where it's on um, a, a level of um, peace, you know, within our body. We're not experiencing um, gastrointestinal problems. We're not experiencing bloating or headaches, you know, or what have you. We want our, bo our body to be in a state of homeostasis. So something to think about the quality of food that you eat as we're ending this year and, and actually just started the holiday season and all the foods that you may or may not consume, you know, and it's okay to do so because that's what we do. And we are to enjoy um, different varieties of food. Um, that's why God made so many, you know, there's so many foods to enjoy. I remember a friend of mine, she said, I told her we're not supposed to eat anything that doesn't have any fins or scales, but she loved crab legs. And she said, well, God shouldn't have made them taste so good. You know, when you dip them in butter, they just taste too, <laughs> too darn good. So anyway, I had to laugh at her about that. So anyway, let's move on. Um, any questions on whole body eating? All right. And if you think of one, just put it in the chat and we'll pick up from there. All right. Okay. So we're going to move on to natural alignment. And when I talk about natural alignment, have you ever considered your body's posture while you're eating? Is it possible that the position of your body influences your experience of the meal? Can it affect digestive capacity and nutritional assimilation? Yes, it can. Maybe you've already noticed how many people, if you've observed people as they eat, most people slouch or hunt you're putting yourself to the food instead of bringing the food to you, all right? Do we even have any idea of the remarkable series of abnormal biological events that this causes on our posture alone? So when the head is bent, think about this, when you're, you're dipping down to your food, you know, the tongue is tipped forward and down. This means that most of the food that enters the mouth touches the front portion of your tongue only. The less the food is exposed to the full surface of the tongue, the less we taste, all right? So our, our tongue has several points of sensitivity, um, basic taste, sweet, salty, sour, bitter. By allowing only one part of the tongue to sense the food, the complex chemical and neural pathways that interact to produce taste are diminished. So not only do we taste less, but the sensation we receive are not are, are only partial, all right? So when the neck and the upper body are tilted forward, forward, what happens to our esophagus? It's constricted. You know, it's not up where the food can flow down into the digestive tract and do what it's supposed to do, all right? What it's designed to do. We are wonderfully and marvelously made. These bodies are designed. It, our bodies want to be healthy, saints. It desires to be healthy and wants to keep us healthy. And we have to know what to do, listen to the language of our body and do it. And therefore that's another step towards optimal health. So the esophagus is normally, it contracts and relaxes with waves of motions called peristalsis that causes food to move to the stomach, right? So if we slouch, the peristaltic waves occur irregularly and may even lock the food in place. So you, have you ever heard this, the saying when people say um, something's is stuck in my throat, you know, food, or maybe even that it, you know, went down the wrong pipe? That's because it, it goes back to 
how we're ingesting the food, you know, our posture, all right? So it makes it difficult also for our upper back portion of the mouth to close off the um, nasal pharynx, which is the entrance way to the nasal passages. And foods may then go up instead of down. And this is the cause, check this, of nasal congestion. Many slouchy eaters experience and is the reason why the food or liquid we consume sometimes come out of our nose, all right? Because of our posture. The slouch position, it inhibits respiration, the trachea, the windpipe. So all of that is affected. And again, as I mentioned, morsels of food will then sneak down the trachea instead of the esophagus. And this is what happens when we say food went down the wrong pipe, all right? And equally important, de decreased um, oxygenation during slouching means to decrease metabolic capacity for digestion, all right? Isn't that interesting? A simple adjustment of your posture when you eat. Bring the food to you, don't take yourself to the food, all right? Now, and furthermore, a slouch body means a scrunched midsection. So when you're scrouching, what happens to your midsection? It's scrunched. So the anatomical positions normally occupied by the digestive organs, which is the stomach, the liver, the gallbladder, the intestines, the pancreas, they're all disturbed, all right? The organs push against each other in an unnatural way and causes decreased blood flow and diminished digestive functions, all right? And finally, the, the, the spinal cord, you know, is bent over and the spinal nerves are compressed. So, you know, Saints, I'm saying all this because we want to experience the full effect of eating when we eat so that our body can do what it's supposed to do, all right? And not come forth with all these um, symptoms, as I mentioned, of um, feeling like there's food still in your throat, feeling like food went down the wrong pipe, feeling like you um, you are not digesting your food properly. You're, you know, bloating, dealing with bloating, gastrointestinal distress in the body. We should not be experiencing all that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> the food should be going down and, and doing what it's supposed to do, digesting properly. So it's just important that one, one other aspect to pay attention to is how you, um, your position of your body, the angle of your spine, you know, while sitting, and it all while sitting, and it also influences our ability to retain information and think logically. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> because overall function of the brain is diminished. Overall function of the brain is diminished during slouchy eating. All right, and the result is a combination, as I mentioned, decreased function in taste respiration, digestive capacity, awareness of appetite, and conscious awareness of the meal. Because when you don't fully taste what you're eating, you're gonna want more of that thing. And once, if you can experience the full, the full experience of what you're eating and the full tasting of it, then you won't want to crave more of it. Your body will be satiated in a state of satiation. So natural alignment of the body is a precursor to fullness to the fullness of experience, not only on the biological level, but also on the psychological level. The subjective experience of eating is dramatically different when you bring food to you, as I mentioned, rather than bringing yourself to it by slouching. Eating with the back straight, chin parallel to the earth. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you don't have to be a robot, you know, just sitting there, mm -hmm. Okay, you can be in a relaxed state, but be cognizant of it and try it out, experience it. I'm telling you, you'll notice a difference if you remember to do so, all right? So, um, you know, we're, we're not animals, we're human. We, we're gonna eat with, uh, uh, in order, let me put it that way. <laughs> so um, there was um, a time that I, this was mentioned to someone and then of course they were thinking, what well, she's, talking out of her head. She doesn't know what she's talking about. What do you mean about the posture of how I eat? And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, after the conversation and then um, after a while, they came back and then mentioned that um, the problems that they were having, you know, the gas problems, the indigestion, the congested sinuses. As I said, your sinuses can be congested simply by slouching as you eat. Cleared. It cleared up significantly. 
by changing the position of their body. So something to be aware of as we, as again, as we're into the holiday season and the many, many meals that you will consume, <laughs> many more than usual, than the average three square, right? <laughs> so we're gonna have many, many more. So experiment with it, eat something. You can experiment with it. Eat something in a slouch position and see what happens. And then next time eat something, you know, in the position that I mentioned and see what happens, all right? So that's something to um, consider. All right. Any questions on alignment, natural alignment? All right. It can be considered um, ordered eating, ordered eating, yeah. So, all right, no questions so far. Good, good, good. All right, so, um, and if you do, like I said, put them in the chat and then we can discuss. All right, let me check, make sure there's nothing there. All right, praise the Lord. Um, so let's move on. We're gonna talk a bit today about the um, chewing. Have you, and I mentioned, you all know that, what's my favorite food? Can anybody tell me? Come on, those who know me, what is it? Nuts, you got it. <laughs> Elder Melinda, she got it. If there's anything you ever wanna give me, just give me a big, big bag of nuts, and I'll, I, but they have to be unsalted, they either roasted or raw, all right? And I'll be a happy camper. And the reason being is that crunch. There's something about that crunch, um, them nuts, you know. I And it has to be also um, hereditary because I remember my mom, she used to um, always have um, a, a can of those party nuts that they call them. If, if you all, if some of you may remember those, some of you may be too um, young to remember that, but they were party nuts and she would always have those around the house. and. It could be an inherited trait as well because I absolutely crave nuts, oh my gosh. And it could be, remember cravings, and when you crave a certain food, um, it could be that you need that particular vitamin or mineral that is in that food. So for me, it more than likely it was probably magnesium, needing more magnesium. Um, the average American um, does not get the recommended daily allowance that we should be getting of magnesium and also of potassium. And magnesium can, it can range, you know, there's not a one size fit all. It can range anywhere between three to 300 milligrams. And then again, you could be getting that, enough of that through the various foods that you eat as well versus having to take a supplementation. And then also uh, potassium, we, we are to get at least 4,700 milligrams of potassium because that potassium, magnesium, sodium balance has to, been in has to be in place in order for our body to be in a state of well-being, homeostasis, especially where our heart health is concerned, our blood pressure is concerned, potassium. Um, eating, simply eating a banana is not, people say, well, I eat a banana. No, that's not enough. A banana only has about maybe 50 milligrams. You would need to eat a, about three or four bunches of bananas, 50 bananas to get <laughs> your recommended daily amount of potassium, which you can get from eating a small salad every day. All right, dark green leafy vegetables. Your, um, your uh, peppers, your avocados, your, um, again, leafy vegetables, there's plenty of potassium. Potatoes, it's full of potassium. You can get it, you know, from the foods you eat versus taking a supplementation. And again, it's important to um, get that report from your doctor to find out where you are as far as your numbers are, number ranges are concerned, and then you can make a well-informed decision. Amen. All right. So let's back. Let's go back to the crunch, <laughs> the psych psychobiology of chewing. So why are crunchy foods so popular? So the advertisers, what they, the products on the late base or on products are on the basis of crunchiness. I don't know if any of you notice that, but there's super crunchy, there's extra crunchy, and then you know they even say it stays crunchy in milk. 
because most people won't eat soggy cereal, right? And have you noticed that whenever you eat your favorite, if you eat chips, all right, <laughs> pretzels or crackers, which are those are the most of the things that we, in order to maintain and obtain optimal health, we want to eliminate pizza, pasta, crackers, bagels, <laughs> breads, um, crackers, potato chips, right? But when you do eat those types of foods, they always have the same somewhat level of crunchiness, right? So advertisers, did you know this? They even do um, testing on the level of crunchiness and how it sounds. The, the most pleasurable decibel levels were recorded and potato chips were then manufactured to these standard crunch levels. Well, we know the market, they know how to market foods to get us to go out at that moment and go buy exactly what you just saw, you know? So they know how to do that, that subliminal messaging that is, oh, oh, so not good. That's the, why we know we wrestle not with flesh, flesh against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I know we're just talking about I want to say just talking about food, but think about the consequences of overeating. I mean, how many people have gone out behind overeating, behind food? We think something simple as food. The only power that it has is the power that you give it. So, you know, we want to um, take care of these vessels that God has entrusted us with and strive for optimal health, to live a good quality of life you know, while we're still here and not just existing through life behind food, which is something that we have the power to control, amen? So um, we're talking about the crunchiness, yeah. So how manufacturers you know, know how to advertise that and crunching and chewing are something that we all love to hear, that crunch. And for me, it comes from um, nuts. So chewing, now, <clears throat> Many people habitually fail to chew. I've, I've, I've actually, over time, I haven't been where I am, got where I am overnight. It took a whole process to get to where I am. And many of you may have known that at, at um, one point in my life, I was just about at 300 pounds, you know? So it took time to adjust um, psychologically, not only physically, but psychologically to my weight loss into my relationship with food, all right? And to let it know that it has no power over me. You know, I have the power over you. Body, you're gonna do what I say to, to, to do. Not the flesh telling you what, but yeah, the flesh will tell you what it wants. You know, it's gonna cry out and, and beg and scream and you, you have to know <laughs> to put it into subjection. Um, God's word says that, <clears throat> but I put my body under subjection, lest by any means, <clears throat> excuse me, when I have preached to others, I myself will be a castaway. But I keep under my body, that's right. I keep under my body and put it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So we have to keep under this flesh and tell it what it's going to do, and it will do it, <clears throat> amen? So many people fail to chew, swallowing food almost whole, you know, so, <clears throat> so the pleasure they're deri deriving is not from the taste of chewing food, but it's from the velocity of what is eating. <clears throat> so when we deny an important natural outlet, uh, of ch which is just simple chewing, you know, technically our food, every more, well, mouth food, fool, should be chewed at least 50 times. And that seems quite like a bit overkill, but you know, <laughs> and it depends on too what you're eating, you know, um, making sure that everything is fully chewed so that the body can do what it needs to do and not again, come out with those diff uh, different symptoms of bloating and gastrointestinal distress um, and so forth, indigestion, you know, that, and that's, it's a simple thing. And then what do we do when those things happen? Most people do, they go and get an antacid or some type of medicine to treat that when all that, we had to do was chew your food. Praise the Lord. <laughs> chew your food until it's done because digestion begins in the uh, mouth. 
<clears throat> so on another level, by swallowing food whole, we, we tend to make a statement about the way we approach the world. We want our hungers in life to be satisfied, right? But are unwilling to take the necessary steps. We want optimal health, but sometimes we can tend not to take the necessary steps. And one of the simple necessary steps is chewing. You, well, of course, what you're putting in your body, the types of foods you're putting in your body, and then how you're chewing that food, how you're allowing your body to ingest that food. Again, with proper alignment, um, <clears throat> proper chewing sensations, you know, whole, a whole body approach to eating. <clears throat> I know this seems minimal to all the other things that are going on in this world, saints, but this is where we are today in health essentials. And this is what we're talking about today. Amen. So the need for immediate gratification is reflected in our refusal to chew. So a side effect of the shortcut method of not chewing is what? What could that be? The side effect of not chewing your food properly, other than what we just mentioned. More hunger. That's because you didn't get the, the satisfaction from chewing all of your food and letting the body do what it needs to do to allow your body to feel satiated from the food that you just ate. So, you know, when you think about it, hospital patients who are fed intravenously or through feeding tubes, okay, so they bypass the mouth. So therefore, sometimes this, the patients, they have a, a nagging hunger for taste. You know, they're not satisfied. So therefore, they're not fully nourished by the, by the, the tubing, all right? So to be fully nourished by food, we must experience it through tasting and chewing. To be fully nourished by any experience, any experience, we must taste, chew it thoroughly. It's no accident that the words we use to describe eating are the same words we use to describe the thinking process, okay? Think about it. When you're presented with an idea, the mind will first, what, grasp it, right? And kind of mull over it. Okay, what is that kind of chewing over it, mulling over it, over and over? And then our conscious mind breaks it down into component parts, all right? which is basically tasting it and then swallowing it into the subconscious and then final assimilation, you know, making a conscious, conscious decision, which you're doing now with the information that I'm giving you. You know, your, your mind is grasping it. So therefore, as we move forward, you'll be able to make a well-informed decision where your health and wellness is concerned. So the... Mouth, as I mentioned, is the first step into the digestive process. So here is the chemical digestion of starches, and it's initiated with amylase, and that's the uh, saliva in our uh, mouth. And it's an enzyme that breaks down the complex carbohydrates, the molecules in a well-salivated mouth. The mechanical digestion of foods is initiated also by the mouth with the process of chewing. The surface area increases and food is broken down. Oh, yes, Brother Michael, you know what? <laughs> I was going to bring up that scripture when we're talking about assimilating God's word. We have to taste his word. He said, oh, taste and see that God is good. How are you going to taste that, right? By first get it, getting it in your eye gate so you can see it, getting it in your ear gate and then speaking it out of your mouth. Oh, taste and see that God is good. Thank you for bringing that up, Brother Michael. Appreciate it, hallelujah. So the um, mechanical digestion, as I mentioned, starts in the mouth and then the food reaches the, goes down the esophagus, you know, into the stomach and the number of molecules exposed to the stomach acid, you know, an enzymatic action is maximized. If you, fall, if you swallow something whole without properly chewing it, an abnormal series of events occur. First, the stomach must try to digest the meat with the acids that it has and break it down in smaller pieces. And it's not designed to do that, all right? And then we go to the, the lengthy chemical process of breaking down large pieces of food because um, with one large bite, only the surface of the meat remains exposed to the stomach's 
digestive juices. To digest the meat any further, the stomach has to secrete more acid than normal. So what happens? This irritates the stomach lining, and I'm going somewhere with this, which is the reason many eaters experience acid indigestion. And then the greater the protein content of the food, okay, check this, the higher level of stomach acidity required to digest it. And what happens when we have too much stomach acid? Ulcers. Ulcers begin to form if there's too much acidity in the stomach. Too much acid, uh, ulcers, basically a hole, a perforation of a hole from the acid in your stomach because there's too much because of the fact that the food was not properly chewed and the stomach is, is trying, you know, is trying its best to digest it, but it wasn't made to do that. All right. So chewing is a pace setter. So how important is it to properly chew our food? <laughs> Let me go back to that. It's very important. Hallelujah. How very important is it to process God's word, to get into his word and then process it? It's very important and then apply it. We can make a well-informed decision to apply his principles in our daily lives. Hallelujah, his promises are true. Hallelujah. He wants the best for us. He's a good God. Hallelujah. He loves us and wants the best for us. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. And that comes, and we know that he sent his son Jesus to die, that we might have that life and have that life more abundantly. And that abundantly includes whatever you need. <laughs> good health. Hallelujah. No dis-ease in the body behind things that we know to do and are not doing, or maybe we don't know to do it, you know? And that's why I'm so thankful with the information that God has given me. And I want to share with his people, you know, where our, our health and wellness is concerned. I don't, amen. So um, chew, by chewing rapidly and insufficiently, we initiate an unsettled frame of mind that is reflected in the body as uncomfortable sensations in the digestive system. Uh, chewing at a moderate to slow rate promotes a relaxed, grounded demeanor. And for many, for many of us, a stronger metabolism, all right? Metabolism is at the rate that your body burns off food, all right, your metabolism. So full chew chewing, it need not be a discipline. Now, full chewing need not be a discipline, but can occur spontaneously, simply by eating with relaxed awareness. So rather, okay, check this. Rather than concentrate on chewing your food, you know, you're sitting there one, two, counting 50 times. No, don't do that. Eat your food, just eat your food and let chewing be a natural part of the eating process. It took me a while to be cognizant of that. I remember um, researching chewing, you know, over the process of time that I've um, been into health and wellness. And then I would sit there and I would, I would count, you know, 50 times. Okay. And then, you know, of course your food is well, well chewed at that. But I did find out that you don't necessarily have to chew that many times again. And then again, it depends on the, you know, whatever type of food that you're eating. If, if, you know, for nuts, you know, you have to chew a little bit more. For crunchier foods, you want to chew a little bit more instead of swallowing. And sometimes the um, natural re reflection of the, the, the swallowing reflex can accidentally swallow something whole. I know that's happened to many of you where you're chewing and then you swallow, it's like, oops. And you know at that moment that you did not chew that particular piece of food properly. And then you, of course, you're gonna um, see it uh, reflected in your digestion. All right. So again, let chewing be a natural part of the eating process. All right. Um, reflections to ask yourself, do you chew your food? Do you know if you chew your food? So from here going forward, and I'm going to ask you all in our next session how cognizant you were of chewing your food, all right? And then ask yourself, do you enjoy, what about finishing your whole meal? Um, what do you mean by finishing your whole meal? If, are you referring to um, finishing everything on your plate? Or Elder Melinda at put a question in the chat. Um, what about finishing your whole meal? If you don't 
finish your whole meal, you know, just eat what you have time for, have made time for without rushing. You know, sometimes I know we only get 15 minutes for lunch, you know, those that are working uh, 15 or 30 minutes for lunch. And there, in that um, situation, you can plan accordingly. So prepare foods that don't require a lot of chewing. You know, maybe have a smoothie for your lunch, you know, eat light and then have your larger meal uh, for dinner when you're able to sit down and really enjoy the meal. So it's important to not eat in a rush because it's gonna reflect in your digestion and in your health, all right? So um, we were talking about reflections. I want you to focus on, do you chew your food? Do you know if you chew your food? And what foods do you enjoy? Do you enjoy the crunch? Or do you enjoy the smoothness of food? What textures do you enjoy? And why do people eat popcorn at the movies? I believe for the crunch. How? They don't. <laughs> I have a question here. How do, how do dogs, cats, and birds chew their food? I know, I know my grandchildren's dog, he, he eats way too fast. So <laughs> I don't know that he can teach me anything from that. So we're not gonna, uh, um, but, or, I, I guess, I guess um, go over that question. So ask yourself, why is taste so important? What, why does taste different from person to person? Um, let me give you an example for me. You know, I, like I said, eating is not a one size fit all. Food to me does not have to taste good. <laughs> as long as I know that it's nourishing my body, I am all right with it. Like bone broth, for instance. I know most people are repulsed by bone broth. If you've ever tried it, it's, it has a, <laughs> a taste that most people would not enjoy. But for me, I know that it's nourishing my body. So therefore I drink it every morning. Bone broth, that's just one food. So um, is taste important to you or not? That's something to ask yourself. And again, simply observe the way you chew without trying to change anything. And then do you notice any patterns? All right. So are there any questions? I know there was a lot of information and I, I just have so much more to share. And um, as I mentioned, in, starting in the new year of 2022, we will break down what we've already gone over a bit further. So any questions on natural alignment, body position when you eat, and also the uh, chewing process? Any comments, concerns? All right. Ooh. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Elder Bridget, I'm just forever amazed how you bring such a wonderful lesson on stuff that's basic to us that at my age, you know, and a lot of our ages, we should already have mastered it. But you're letting us know that if we haven't gotten it together or gotten it right yet, there's still time that we can change some things about how we eat. And I really love how you couple our bodies being aware and taking care, how you couple the teachings about our bodies, like the scriptures tell us, oh, taste and see the Lord is good. And I believe he gave us these taste buds so we can taste these things, but he yeah. also wants us to take time and enjoy what he's given us and to, with the knowledge we have, to make sure that we're eating holistically and healthy and that is nourishing. Now, I'm not quite with you yet on the bone broth. I'm trying to get there. I have to mix mine in with some soup and a whole bunch of other stuff so I don't yeah. taste it. You know? yeah, right. <laughs> but thank you so much for how you help us to care for our bodies. And you always bring the word in, which that is so important for us to carry those together. You know, thy word have I hid so that we'll have knowledge of him and how to take care of these bodies through the knowledge and the help that you're giving us in this class. So God bless you all. I just took my walk. So if you can get outside, it's so beautiful. A little crisp in the air, but just what we need for those lungs. Yeah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Have a wonderful day, all of you. Thank you, dear elect lady, for that feedback. I appreciate it. God and you know, of course, to God, I give all the glory. Hallelujah. He gets all the glory. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And, um, you know, it's not about the quantity of what we're um, ingesting you know, or, you know, but we want quality, you know, we want to make sure that we put, we're putting quality 
nourishment inside of these bodies that God has entrusted us with. We're going to be responsible and we're going to have to answer on that final day. What did you do with this vessel that I gave you? Hallelujah. Did you finish the work? You know, we know all that. Did you finish the work or did you go out early behind dis-ease that could have something that we could have prevented, something simple that we could have prevented? So any other questions or concerns, comments are always welcome. Complaints too. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, if not, we um, I'm going to follow up on our next session uh, with those awareness um, suggestions that I gave to you, and I will ask you on that. And then we're going to follow up with um, the elements of sweetness, which we will, which will be followed by ordered eating. And again, that's going to take us. And then uh, finally, we'll be talking about true nourishment, and that'll take us, you know, through to the end of the year as far as what we're going to be bringing forth um, with health essentials. All right. Any questions? No? All right. Well, I love you all. And thank you so much for joining in. God bless you. And let us close in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for this time of sharing and caring, Lord God. We thank you for the people that joined in, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, as you continue to mold and meld us all into the perfection that you would have us to be, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one that joined in today, Lord God, via it be Zoom or Facebook or YouTube, Lord God, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let the information that has been presented today resonate with them, Lord God. God and be sealed in their hearts, Lord God, so that we all will be striving towards optimal health, Lord God, living a good quality of life and not just walking through and existing in a state of dis-ease. And we just thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing, all that you've done and all that you're going to do where our health and wellness is concerned. And we give you all the continued praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you all, and we'll talk soon. I'll see you next session. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hello, Michael. Hi. <laughs> Look, lady. <laughs> Pastor. <laughs>